You. Yo, yo, what's poppin'? We here. Let's get it going. We got RKT appraisals in the building. What's good? What's good? What's poppin'? What you got killing me, Rashidi, in here. So we got we got uh, uh, the topic, man. Can you afford to die? It was, yeah. I guess the answer is no. So you got, you got to keep living because that can't afford to die. <laughs> but what's, what's, what's this topic about? Go ahead. What's, <laughs> go in. So, yeah, I'm going to start it off, right? So we have to understand, right, from the time before we even talk about death, right? Let's let's just quickly talk about life real quick. Right. Do you know the cost of giving birth is close to twenty about $18,000? What? From pregnancy. Yeah. From pregnancy to delivery to postpartum, mm. close to $20,000. $20, so just keep in the mindset that from the time that you are born, mm. <laughs> You know, how, that you know how cheap this is? This is this is a dollar eighty. This is a dollar eighty. Yeah. Fuck eighteen thousand. This is a dollar eighty. Wow. <laughs> Yo, you know what at any point, at every point in time, there's always a cost. Right. From the time that you are breathing until the time that you are deceased, there is a cost, regardless. Right. <sighs> Five. So, here's what I have to. Say. When it comes to, can you guys hear me? Am I good? Oh, yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, good. So now from the time of now, when somebody dies now, right? Can mm. you afford to die? For most people, the answer is no. Like what Ms. L like what Mr. Okari was saying. Mm. Why? The cost of patient, the cost of the burials, and uh the medical costs. Mm. All of these things together, about twenty thousand dollars. Mm. Twenty thousand dollars just to die. That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> that's wild. And most people. Most people are not ready for it. They're mm. not ready for it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And that's that's a tough pill to swallow. Now, luckily for a lot of people, me and Rashidi, right? We, so, right? Call our KT appraisals. Why? Because if you had life insurance, this wouldn't be an issue. Right. So you can't mm. literally afford to die if you had life insurance. But the truth is most people don't have it because they feel they don't need it. They feel they're going to die anyway. So what's the point? But mm -hmm. the truth is you're going to leave that financial burden on a loved one. You're going to leave that financial burden on someone that you care about. And that's a selfish way of thinking. If you think that when you go, that there's no consequences after you pass away. Right. But let me ask a question. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask a question real quick. If I'm a if I'm a cheap ass nigga that don't give a fuck, can I just leave my family member in the morgue? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you can. The truth is you can. The truth is you can. Yeah. Mm. That is the, 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 the answer. You can do that, but right. why? Why would you want to do that? That's crazy. It's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I mean, the real result of that too is that if, if you choose to go that route, yeah. pretty much the government just burn your body and nobody gets no privileges of seeing you at a funeral. <laughs> That's right. a reality situation. Like you, you go on, you're done. If you're not, if you're not paying, paying for this funeral, then nobody can't see you. Nobody can't honor you. You're done. Like you know, they're gonna burn your body, cremate you, and and send and have you pick the the urn up. Um, when when it's all said and done, that's what's gonna happen. That's and, and and they're probably gonna donate your organs too. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> right. Damn, that's crazy. So so basically saying it's like because like okay, so when you die, because you're saying like funeral costs is gonna cost a lot of fucking money, right? Um, and what happens is is that if a person, let's say a person doesn't have any life insurance, then they die and then they family like let's say uh, you got a husband who has kids and a wife he doesn't really have health insurance um not health insurance uh your life insurance so let's say he dies that means that the wife is going to be responsible for all of those things at the end of the day right yeah. correct damn that's fucked up yeah, I, I mean and that's that that was going to be the add on to what Katie was saying i mean when we really think about it like the reason why you, you can't afford to die, think about it. If you're the person, uh, and let's take it on a simple level. Mm -hmm. If you're a person in the family that you're on a family plan on a cell phone, mm -hmm. and say you're the head of that person, you're the head of that, that cell phone plan and you die. Now everybody else got to get new cell phones. As ridiculous as that sounds, mm -hmm. imagine you not having no phones now because the person dead and they can't pay the bill and you got to change your service over. It's right. simple. It can right. be done, but that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. Let's get the bigger bills. If you were that person in the family and you had a car, and the car was in your name. Now they got to turn that car in. Now your family don't got no car to drive. Mm. I mean, it, it goes to the next level. If you were a person that 
was uh you know the person that um was on the lease the lease and that's this is a big one it happens all the time if the person is on a lease and they die you cannot renew the lease mm. so therefore your family has to move and has to figure this all out by right. himself <laughs> you know what i mean so it's it's so many levels and even on a smaller scale mm. if you're just one of the people that contributes to one of these things it's now a loss for all those people right so at the end of the day if you don't really put the right things into place you're really saying screw everybody not only are you leaving them with no money you leave them in debt and you pretty much leave, leave them with a screw you on the way out though like when, mm. when it's all said and done though because now they got to pick up your slack that you left over right mm. so at minimum at minimum at minimum all you should be you should be able to at minimum be able to get a basic life insurance policy just to cover just to cover everyone at the end of the day mm. so so basically getting a life insurance policy for everyone but especially yourself is good so that if you do die <laughs> then you know shit could be handled in a certain way to where they, like actually things could go down right is that what you're saying exactly exactly mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. the thing is it's like you're going to leave the financial burden on somebody for what think about it christmas time is around right right on average people spending thousands of dollars on christmas mm -hmm. for a thousand dollars you would have paid up your life insurance policy for maybe one maybe two years mm -hmm. right and people spend that in two weeks mm -hmm. on gifts that the children are gonna play with by the first quarter of the following year, they're gonna be done with it. Mm -hmm. Right. You get what I'm saying? So we're not really thinking about the future. And that's what this is really about. Like literally, can you really afford to die? The answer is no. What will you do? The, the answer is what will you do about it? What changes mm -hmm. will you make? Right. Damn, that's crazy. So so the thing is, like, let's say um so like if okay, so let's say a person, like, what's the average funeral cost? About about uh twenty k. Well, it you can I put it like this: you can bury somebody for like a good eight to ten thousand. Mm, right, that's still a lot though. You know what I'm saying? But that's, and mind you, that's not even that's not even including the tombstone. Mm. That's just literally that's basic service. Mm. When we that's say basic, basic service, service, we mean a pine box. Right. That's it. Damn. That's basic. Damn, that's crazy. And so, and and so, and so, who's responsible directly for that? Like, so, like, if if a person is married, and let's say the father dies, is the 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 you know the the mother's responsible for that? Like the the wife? Yeah. Who, 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 who was left? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's just it's, it's terrible. It's, it's her responsibility. So what about debt? What about debt? Who's who's responsible for the debt of someone once they die? I mean that 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 one becomes complicated. So, mm -hmm. so back back to your point, Mr. Lacarta. That one now, if you are married, right. you're truly screwing your wife over because now you're married and his debt is her debt. So therefore, in that situation, yeah. or or the roles reverse, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. the wife dies or the, or the husband dies, in that situation, you truly are screwed if you can't afford to die because that that legal debt now goes on to that person. Right now course on the flip side if it's not a married situation it, it truly only affects you if that person did all the stuff to put your name on legal documents to contact just in mm. case xyz if they're named as a payee that type of stuff which right. let's be honest if you if that if a person was smart enough not i don't want to say smart enough if a person was prepared enough to mm. do all that type of stuff they would have had a life insurance <laughs> policy right so essentially in those situations is just it, 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 the debt, the debt just dissolves. You, you know, it can be left on to family members if they attach to loans and stuff like that. But outside of it, anything being legally attached, it's only but so far the debt collectors can go and chase you. They are debt collectors that will chase you, but mm -hmm. they, they're going to give up after a while because if it, if there's no legal attachment, there's not much they could do to get the debt, and it's going to take them a long time. It's not going to be financially worth it because they have to actually put in way more work to actually get that debt back from you than it than it's worth their time. Essentially, right. crazy. Yeah, so go ahead, okay, go ahead, like I saw you was say yeah, I was about to say it's, it's one thing when like you know somebody who passed away, mm -hmm. right? Okay, you're sad, you're feeling this type of way about it, but then right. it's a, a different thing when you're connected with that person mm. because the connect the financial thing, mm. you know what I'm saying? When you're connected with that person and that person is gone, right? Now you have to think about all the things that this person contributed financially, and mm. now you have to pretty much make up for every for, for that loss mm. and that's really what it's basically that's the basis of, of this that's what it's all about mm. when a person is no longer here you have to ask yourself 
can I still afford to do what I'm doing today? Right. That's and crazy. in most cases, that's the answer is no. Mm -hmm. For right. most cases. So mm. it, it's deeper than, you know, don't get me wrong when it comes to the, the policies that we sell. Yes, the, uh, the, the IUL is the, the, the greatest thing in the world. Don't get mm. me wrong. However, that's the investment is just a benefit to the insurance. It is still mm. insurance first. Right. It is still the just in case factor first. Mm. So it comes to, you know, like I said, when it comes to death, 20 came in just to leave this earth. It's, it's like, who could do it? Who could really do it? Most people can't. Mm. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, so basically like how long, okay. So, so, so what, so what would be like a round number generally that you would think is enough <laughs> for a person to be like, okay, I could die and my family's good. Like what, what's your thoughts on it? Is it around 20 K or is it more things? Like what, what would you say? I mean, it, it, to me, you know, to me, it, it's all about what you want to leave your family, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. You know what I mean? It's right. one of those things where if you want to just leave um, funeral expenses, that's a good thing because it's just less stress and they don't have to come out their pockets to bury you and they right. bury you the right way. Right. So that's the right. bare, bare, bare minimum. But let's be honest, at least if if you weren't balling in life or, you know, or you, you weren't making a certain amount of money or you couldn't financially contribute mm -hmm. on the low, this is a great way to make up for that. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Like. You certain things you can accomplish financially in life, at least in death, you can accomplish it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where let's be honest. Like if you made, you know, say ten dollars an hour your whole life and you, you can't do nothing with it, and let's not get it twisted. Certain people can make ten dollars an hour and do create a lot of things with it, believe mm -hmm. it or not. But if you wanted to put on the on the flip side that they didn't do anything with it, at least if you die and you got a hundred thousand dollar policy and it's twenty thousand dollars for the funeral, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you have a small family, mm -hmm. anybody walking away 15, 20 stacks. I right. mean, what what a way to go out! Like, damn, Uncle Jim, he ain't never get me no real Christmas present, but he gave me twenty thousand. I knew I loved him. Right. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. And that at that point will help you better your life because at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you know, that could be, you know, one of your kids going to college or supplemental income, getting a car, um, helping put a deposit on a house. Mm -hmm. In any way, just everybody needs money. Right. Getting extra ten twenty k from a, a loved one that died and left you something is massive. You, you know what I mean? It, it'll help your life, and that's yep. the main thing about it. Yo, I just looked up a map on Google and it says the median cost of a of a funeral cremation is anywhere from one thousand to seven thousand dollars. For cremation? Cremation. That's crazy. <laughs> wow. That's a turn with the dust. Wow. <laughs> to burn you turn but, but this is but this is with this is with uh funeral services included though. Mm. See, that's, that's not that's not bad. Still expensive. I, I I don't know. I don't know where you would get that for a thousand though. I mean that that might be something where they you know they 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 burn you real quick and you do a walk by with the urn like for a thousand. I can't foresee how. <laughs> All right, so so basically for five to seven thousand, that's cremation with funeral. So you know where where they put your urn on the little thing and then they they give the eulogy and the little ceremony. But they say that it's one thousand to four thousand without the funeral services. So when they just burn your ass and then that's it. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. And there's a video here about the process of cremation. Hold on. Losing a loved one is a stressful and upsetting time. Yes. And finding the right information about funeral services is difficult. Yes. Especially at such a trying time. In this video, we'll go over cremation, an alternative to the traditional funeral process. From start to finish, steps involved in the cremation Listen. There are six main steps involved in the cremation process. First, we need to correctly identify the deceased, oh. which is generally confirmed by a family member, though this can vary state by state. Upon confirming, the identity is placed on the body, which will remain throughout the process and then be put with the remains for final verification. Next, the person making the final arrangements will need to then complete paperwork authorizing the cremation to proceed. The paperwork also asks for information regarding the type of container the crematory should use mm. and who will be responsible for picking up the remains. That's Once crazy. the green light is given, the body is prepared. All jewelry and other items are removed and given to the family for safekeeping. Mm. The body is placed in a vessel that is combustible, yet strong enough to hold the weight. A purpose-built industrial furnace or cremation chamber exposes the body to flames and extreme temperatures, leaving behind only ashes. Mm. 
post-cremation, any metal fragments remaining from past surgeries or other reasons are Oh, like if you got a metal hip or a plate in your head. Removed, and the ashes are further ground down, resulting in the final ashes. The ashes are then placed in an urn or other container as requested and returned to the family. So, yeah, man, that's that's the cremation process right there, man. I want to look at some of the, co the, the comments in, the, in, the, in the, the chat right here. He said, I told my mom to cremate me. I don't want to spend all that money on me, which I, I, I agree with that. That's nothing wrong with that. If the cremation is fine, but at least if you're doing the cremate. Like Miles said, you just want to have at least <laughs> the five to seven cost. So at least they can have a little service for you at the end of the day. You know what I mean? And then uh, somebody said someone's being cheap. A ship ship his cousin shipped his uh pops to Jamaica and he turned to maggots. But that's real though. <laughs> that's real right there. Though, like. it's, it's, it's hot in Jamaica, so you know. Mm -hmm. No, but uh, imagine that you th this is a prime example. Like you, you can't afford to bury him and you try to go the cheaper route and just to save money, and it costs money to ship the body, and the body's shipped over there, and because of the time or whatever the case is, and and, and the heat, the body turned to maggots, so the family couldn't even see him. So, mm -hmm. so you know what I mean? The family couldn't even really afford to really view the body. That's that's great, but that's how serious it is when you don't have the money to do the certain things. And if you have one of those policies, aka call RKT, we'll line you up so that type of stuff doesn't have to happen. You know what I mean? It's it's um you know it's a serious thing at the end of the day. Not only that, but what what the what's important too is that a lot of people are not ready for these conversations, and that's the problem. We're so used to um you know the the, the norm waking up every day, going to work. It's so like in sequence. It's it's just a regular day. We're not thinking about, you know, tomorrow and what if what's going to happen. We're not talking about the future. So a lot of people don't have these conversations, hence them not being prepared. If Don't get me wrong. Naturally, as humans, we all get emotional to a degree. If somebody is no longer here, that's going to affect us. But the yeah. better prepared that you are, the better off you're going to be. And these are what these policies allow um, us to do. It's to make sure that we're well prepared for when these times do come. You don't have to panic. You don't have to worry about, you know, you don't have to worry about no GoFundMes. Like that's that's the worst thing. When I when I'm on Facebook and I see a GoFundMe, I just shake my head because I'm like, this didn't have to be that. This mm -hmm. didn't have to be this way. But a, a lot of times, that's the consequence of people are not being prepared. They say if you stay ready, you never got to get ready. But that's mm -hmm. it, it's it's never the case. Right. And just to kind of like what Ms. Locario was saying, as far as the to me, the 20K is just the bare minimum mm. to just for just for the funeral to where nobody has to come out of pocket. Right. 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 Actually leave somebody something that's nowhere near enough. Mm. Depending on how big your family is, even a hundred. Oh, yeah. Going up every single year, a hundred K mm. is not even enough. Mm. At minimum, in my opinion. At minimum, to actually change a family's legacy, right? To change things, right? Nothing less than half a million dollars worth of coverage, right? That changes that's things. That's crazy. They and, like, and, just and throw, the, just the, throw, the, throw him in the river. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and mind you, think about it. What and, and what people think too is that the cost of a half a million dollar policy is going to be four, five hundred dollars. No, I, we can get a, a, a policy that's half a million worth of coverage. I kid you not, for less than hundred dollars a month. Mm. For less than hundred dollars a month. That's and crazy. And it, it's this it, how simple it is. So you say, so you say you get a, a, a half a million dollars worth of coverage with just say with just a hundred dollars a month. One hundred percent. How long? How long does that take for like the, for that to occur or whatever? Who the you process. Say? Yeah. Anywhere from one to three weeks. No, I'm talking about how long would it take to get them to be able to have that coverage? Oh, like how long does the coverage last? Yeah, yeah. So anywhere, what I'm talking about right now, as far as that rate, that's a term mm. policy anywhere from 10 to 30 years. Right. Mm. 10 to 30 years. Mm. That They can get a permanent policy with that much coverage. It's just a little bit more expensive. Right. Instead of 100, re realistically, maybe about $300. Right. Because mm. it's perfect. It lasts the whole, the, that person's whole life. Right. That's dope. I mean, this is why. See, you know what's funny about all this? And this this kind of goes with when we be, you know, we're on, we're on a um, other channel, we talk about game and all this other stuff. We be telling guys about prevention, like, like, or you know, doing things beforehand so that you can prevent a certain thing from occurring. 
Right. So the concept here is that, look, you got to get on this now and do this now so that when things occur in the future, you, you're prepared and you ain't got to worry about all this other stuff. And then it's like what happens is that when it becomes too late, that's when everybody wants to scramble and be like, oh, you know, right. this and that. And it's just like, you know, that's 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 the yeah, that's the hard part about it. But see, I think I think that the, the hard part about it, too, is that like a lot of people think everyone thinks they're going to live to 100. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> like, like everybody thinks like like I, I swear I feel like whenever anyone thinks about life or death or whatever, like oh yeah, well you know I you know I want to live to a hundred or you know but I, I you know they imagine themselves all being old people dying and it's like that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? Like shit can happen any moment. You know what I mean? Any right. Given- right. You know any- what I'm saying? I says, I told my family if I die in my sleep to roll me roll me up in a rug and put me on the side of the curb. He said put me on the street with the trash. I, I, I mean, listen, that, that'll work. Except nobody's gonna identify it, but you're not by not gonna be identified by nobody. <laughs> by the time they identify the body, you know, like, they would have found out you died like a month ago. Two okay. months ago, like, <laughs> you know I mean? like it will work. It will work. <laughs> shit. Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> crazy though. I, I wouldn't. Yeah, if you're if you're a parent, like if you don't have life insurance for you and your family, <laughs> literally, like that's bad parenting. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Right. Bad parenting. Mm-hmm. Like you should be ashamed of yourself <laughs> because <laughs> because at, at this point. Mm-hmm. It, you're literally like the, the world is the world. Like you can you can only control what you can control. Mm-hmm. This thing's happen that's out of your control. Right. You're leaving it up to chance to where if something happens to you, mm-hmm. if you love and care about your children that much, you're gonna right. leave it on somebody else mm-hmm. right. to take care of you financially. You right. Know? That's crazy. Right? You get what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, but if I'm dead, I don't give a fuck. You feel me? So it is what it is, nigga. You feel me? <laughs> He's like, fuck all y'all niggas. <laughs> He's like, I'm dead, nigga. <laughs> fuck and, you. And, 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 and then you're going to be the one where it's three people that showed up to your funeral. And it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. No, but you, know, you, know, you know what's crazy, though? You know what's crazy? You would truly, well, you won't know because you're dead, but other people would know mm. how impactful you are. Mm. At your funeral, your associate count, how much people actually showed up. Right, yeah. right. It's true. <laughs> real talk, like real talk. My, my, my stepfather, right? He passed away a couple of years ago in 2017. Mm. Right. When I mean the church was packed. I know, right? For real. I was like, what? I'm like, what? Was packed. I was like, so I'm like, yo, it's one thing because he 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 was a guy that who boasts all the time. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was one of those guys that, that he always bragged about something, right? Right. So then he'd be like, and he would say it. He said, he'd be like, okay, when I'm dead and gone, you're going to miss me. You're going to love me. Right? <laughs> so I'm like, all right, go. I feel you. I feel you. Right. And he said, watch. Watch at my funeral. It's going to be tons of people. And he was not lying. Like, the <laughs> church was back. And that's how you know when you, re- when you really and truly make an impact on other people's lives. When your funeral, I'm talking about, like, you would have thought it was a party. Yo, what was funny was I remember that day I was chilling. It was me and my one of my dude Joe Thrills. Shout out to him. I haven't seen him in years, but we was chilling in the crib. And I, this is the funniest shit. The nigga we were chilling, and then uh, our stepdad was like there. We was listening to music, and my friend Joe Thrills was like, "Yo, Nas is the best." And my stepdad looked at us. And he looked us up and down. He was like, "Fuck Nas." I was like, <laughs> <laughs> That shit was the funniest shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I, I was thinking about that when he said, yo, yo, that shit do funny. Yo, I'm not even, you know what? You know what's crazy? Like, I, I remember, I remember y'all stepped that. Remember he lent us the, his keyboard? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and I made like four fire beats off that keyboard. Right, right exactly. So, you know. <laughs> hey, nah, also oh, real shit. Yeah. Um, what, what was his name? Rob or uh, Matt? Matt, Matt, right? yeah. Matt, yeah, Matt. Yeah. He, it, Matt, like he was a real cool dude. Like, and I don't, I don't never remember anything bad about son. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to him, man. Rest in peace to him, man. Yeah, right. man. yeah Matt, bro. Yeah, he, he left us the keyboard like it was nothing. He's like, yeah, you want to use it? Right. Exactly. 
<laughs> like, yeah, take that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we made some fire joints on that on that keyboard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a couple fire pieces out of that and gave it back to him and shit. Yo, I mean, and then and, and you know, it means something when you when you can affect. Mm-hmm. And you know, honestly, you know, we're talking about life insurance and this, that, and the third, but on a more spiritual level, guys, right. <laughs> you have to you have to be you have to be a value to the to the loved ones around you. Mm-hmm. Then and only then will you be able to afford to die. Right. Because you've left it all on in life mm-hmm. because you can't take it with you when you die. Right, exactly. All right. This has been a message from <laughs> from RKT uh, Funeral Homes. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, y'all selling life insurance. A funeral home is the next is the next logical step as far as oh, no, no, well, there's a step before that. There's the nursing homes, and then there's the funeral homes. Um, I'm paying, we're like we're paying attention to the baby boomer era, when right? Right. That's all the retirement. So it's, it's nursing homes, then funeral homes. N- nursing homes with the hospice. Yes. The funeral homes. Yeah. No, I'm yo. Hey, let's 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 put a plan. Oh, we should probably talk offline. But. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole <laughs> That's for the elite. That's yeah, they mm-hmm. they can't hear about this conversation, right? You feel me? <laughs> that's some real shit though. That's some real shit though. Like, you know, um, can you afford to die? I mean, you know. Having a having life insurance is important, you know, but you want to you want to make sure you want to try to make sure that there's a lot of people at your funeral, too. You know, because like I said, like I, I only met Matt like one or two times, but he affected my life in a positive way. Okay. You understand? Yeah. And and I could I could I could say that like I can physically say that he helped. He literally helped our music. Right. You understand? Like he literally like, you know, gave to us. And I, I ain't know Matt from nowhere, you know, but he, he let us borrow because I, I I forget we was doing a, I think we was doing a mixtape or something. And it was before I was able to to buy my own keyboard and he lent us the keyboard. You know what right. I'm saying? And I made some fire beats on the joint. You know what I'm saying? So that's you know, that's that's crazy, man. I, shout out to Matt, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Matt, man. That's some real shit, man. Yeah. Real sure. shit. Sure. Yeah, real man. shit. Yeah. You know, you know what's crazy? Um Another thing that made me realize this whole, you know, that situation, how important it is, is mm. COVID, believe it or not. COVID. Yeah. COVID was like so alarming. Because a lot of people passed away and they didn't have coverage. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, they, they literally got put to the wayside. Right. Mm. Funeral. As a matter of fact, funerals were so packed and overbooked because of COVID and everybody's passing away at such an alarming rate. Right. It, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And then, and then another issue, you know, talking about like, you know, death and shit. You know, Master P's family they lost his sister. Yep. Which is why Romeo is out here, you know, going crazy, talking shit about his pops and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you know, so it's like, it's like if you if you do if you can get the life insurance, that's one less thing that your family has to worry about. You know what I'm saying? Because they're gonna got they, you know they got to grieve, they got to deal with the fact that you're not here, they got to put your affairs in order at least. At least leave them something to lighten the load. You know right. what I'm saying? So it is yeah. what it is. Especially if you, as a man, you know, as a, as a black man or as a man, period, you're the, you know, you're the leader of your family or you're, you know, you're, you're the, the you know, the patriarch in some mm-hmm. sort of fashion. Because I'm not, a, I'm not a father, but, you know, if if I was to pass, I know my moms, my sister, my nephew, my dad, they looking at, because I'm a, you know, I'm a big part of the family. I help out a lot of people in my family. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, they're going to be still looking like, ah, that's, that's one, that's one pillar of the family. That's a patriarchal pillar of the family that's missing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you want to, you know, I got my life insurance with RKT appraisals. You know what I'm saying? I got my shit. I got my shit popping. <laughs> like I, yeah, if, I, if I die right now, you know, Lucario's good. My nephew's good. My sister, my mom's, everybody's good. They ain't got to worry about cremating or, or burying me or nothing. You know what yeah, I'm get, saying? Get, get, get another policy, brother. Add me on there, too, though. All right? <laughs> <laughs> I just might. I just might. You never know. Shit. Crazy. I, I want everybody to be good when I'm out of here. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Oh, I got a question to ask y'all. Does, if a, if a person commits suicide... Uh, does that affect the the policy? Yeah, no, no, you can't. Cause most policies two years. You, you can't commit suicide within two years. Oh, within two, but after two years, you're good. 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> as crazy as it sounds. <laughs> that, yo, awesome real shit. And, you know, rest in peace, no disrespect, but that's that's a... Because I heard that uh, DJ Twitch... Mm -hmm. Like either bet bet on some crypto shit or did something with some money issues, and mm. that, that could be a part of the reason why he pat he uh, deleted wow. himself. Mm. He probably had a really good insurance policy out on himself, right? And that was probably the that was probably maybe in his mind that was the only way to like make sure his family was taken care of, right? That's crazy. So yeah. you know, so hey guys, you know, get a policy, wait two years, and. Handle your business, you know what I'm saying? Elon Musk is talking about transferring your conscience to a machine to live forever. I'm gonna try that. <laughs> you probably ain't gonna be around that, for that. Hey, that hey, that's I, I mean, unless right you're two years old, maybe you'd be around 67 years from now. Whoa, yeah. No, yeah, they're talking about they 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 trying to figure out how much your how many how many gigabytes your brain hold. That's crazy. Or, or how many terabytes your brain hold and shit. Wow. So, Put your memories on a. How the fuck you could transfer consciousness? How the fuck you even do that? Like, I mean, they probably, they probably working on it. The problem is, is that let's be honest. If you can't afford life insurance right now, you think you won't be able to afford that service? Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? that's, like, for the, that's for the rich niggas. You know, like, that's gonna cost you ten million dollars a month. Exactly. <laughs> plus, <laughs> plus, who wants to save? Like, you know I mean? like, <laughs> and, and and who wants to save the memories of a broke nigga? Exactly. That's a fact. <laughs> Don't commit suicide. It's not going to work in your favor. I promise you. <laughs> these they, 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 they way too smart for that. Don't do it. Don't <laughs> <laughs> like you leave and, your and family. That's why they have that two years thing too, because you know so it, it's it, a contestability it, it, period. Right. Yeah, exactly. When they, they, they. What happens is the companies can challenge anything within two years mm -hmm. to, to, like, let's say if um. They have any reason to suspect that mm. you know insured is lying about anything. Right. They, if if the insured dies within a, within that two year time span, they don't have to pay out. Mm. Mm. That's crazy. And that's then, AKA, you, you got to plan like a mug for the, for two years. Mm. You, you, that, that's a lot of planning, a lot of patience. So right, <laughs> patience. That's why they put that two year. Like, come on, like exactly. two years. Most people who commit suicide ain't got no patience. That's why they kill exactly. them. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't stay here for two years. I need to get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm <laughs> oh shit, man! But you know, so, you know, rest in peace to all the people who committed suicide, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, right. man, back up with that, though. That's know, it's, crazy. It's, it's, I heard it's, that it's, 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 isn't it? It's illegal to commit suicide, right? It, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. It is. I never, I, don't, I never understood that. Like, why is it illegal? To, like, you know what I'm saying? But I want to talk. I know, no, no, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something. In Canada, they're trying to make. Uh, suicide uh, legal in Canada. That, I, th I always thought it should be legal. Like, why the hell is, is that? It's like, it's you. It's your shit. It's yourself. Why the fuck you can't? That's like saying that they're going to start saying you can't jerk off and shit now. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be legal. Now. <laughs> you got to take yourself out to dinner and get to know you first. Because <laughs> you're not that type of guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, yeah, what the fuck? Oh, God. oh man, they saying that. Um, uh, let me see. This is this is Canada. Hold on. It says, um, Canada revised medical assistance in dying. Mm. <clears throat> they said came into force March seventeenth, twenty twenty one. New law includes changes to, to eligibility, procedural safeguards, and the framework for federal government data collection and reporting regime. Mm. So basically, what in Canada they say if you if you broke, mm. if you broke you you can you can like uh, delete yourself. Wow. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm telling you right now, I'm not suicidal. If if I die, it was a hater. I'm just telling you right now, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it to myself. Okay. <laughs> it says who? It says who can provide medical assistance in dying? Who can help? It says uh, those who can provide. Uh, they call it MAID. M A I D. Medical assisted. Uh, something. Something. Mm. Wait. 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 Hold on. Medical that assisted. Medical assisted, medical assistance in dying. That's what they call it. Yeah. So it says it says physicians, nurse practitioners, pharmacists, and uh, pharmacy techs. Family members that you may ask to help healthcare providers and, and people like that. It says pr pr protecting the right of providers to act according to their beliefs and values. So it's, it's like a whole thing in Canada where if you if you feel like life is too much for you, they, they say that you have the right to, to get assistance from medical professionals to take your life. 
Oh wow, that's crazy. And, but that's only in Canada. And they 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 thinking about making it legal over here too, but not not so soon, not yet. Wow. You, know, you, got, you got people like you always see those law and order episodes. I mean it's real life where, where people be killing people, like you know what I mean? Like, oh he told me they could and then you go to jail. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Helping somebody kill themselves. That's why they put that law in place. They're pretty probably too many people went to jail for helping somebody else kill themselves. You know what I mean? Man, listen, man. Life is good, bro. I don't know about these well, niggas. Kind of good though. Yeah, that's a fact. Life is kind of good. Man. I ain't trying to do all that, bro. <laughs> all right. So any, any last words? Any last words on this uh before we wrap it up? I mean, for me, I would say um if you don't have a life insurance policy, definitely call RKT appraisals. They, I had uh, two different situations where um, a, a, someone called me who didn't have coverage when a family member passed away. And I also had a different situation where I got uh, somebody coverage and th that person called me when that family member passed away. And mm. it was two different conversations. So mm. trust guys and get, those, get these policies. Me and Rashid can help you put these in place. And yes, give us a call. Yeah, and 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 look, they're not that they're not that, that expensive. So if it's if it's your money, at least call RKT appraisals to get a consultation just to see how much it costs. But right. honestly, it's not that expensive, bro. It's really, really not. Right. And, and you could get you could get minimal policies that are cheap as hell. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you know. Oh, right. man, sorry, last thing I never go ahead. One, uh, one last thing I would say, and like uh, Miles helped me remember it. You can get a, a policy that's very cheap. And then when you do get the money in the future, you can convert it to a bigger and better policy. So you don't have to stick with that policy, that that small policy. Right. Which they right now. Right. Yeah. And, and just don't be that person, man. I, I'll give a quick example, man. Working in insurance, man. I, I had a girl I used to work with back in the day. It was like 10 years ago. Mm. She was freshly married, like 26, 27, had a brand new baby. And a husband, young, 25, 26, 7, died. They just bought a house. And he didn't even have life insurance and we worked in insurance mm. and she had to sell everybody had to sell everything craziness for like a whole two years of her life don't be that person don't be right. that person don't Damn. be that person exactly that's crazy all right so all right. yeah so, man, yeah, we appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you guys go to rktappraisals.com. Hit up Kaleem and Rashidi, and we will highlight y'all later. Remember, the truth is inside you. Peace. We gone. We out.